that's the first page uh, introduction paper in this museum. Can we go down? And this is the attendance uh, list. Go down. Uh, committee members who were at the meeting and the and the staff uh, that was present. Uh, okay. Then they took on us the, on the that on the on the members uh, next right. to my name. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's probably just a typing error, but the, the Democratic Alliance, this must be spelled correctly, please. Uh, Mr. Mare. Oh, I see, I see, I see. You have not uh, crossed the floors yet. <laughs> <laughs> please correct that. Uh, Democratic I, I wish the floor crossing legislation, I wish the floor crossing legislation comes back. <laughs> you, oh, you, okay. All right. <laughs> I remember those days. Okay, colleagues, there's yeah, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, 1.3 overview of the mini uh, symposium. All right, let's go down to 1.4. All right, there's no 1.4, it's two. It's presentation by Professor Lindy Heineken. Took us through the contextual orientation and uh, addressed the, she addressed the misalignment in the post design and, uh, and, uh, and, and committed on the vision to, to action. Okay, go down. And then there was a presentation by Dr. Moses Kanyele, uh, right? Starting with the scope of the presentation, go down. Force design versus force structure and force structure planning dynamics, go down. And 3.3 .3 points to ponder. Uh, she left us with a few points to uh, reflect on. Then there was a presentation by Mr. Hazelmut Rommel Heitman. All right, uh, force, force des SADF force design. Uh, SNTF uh, minimum uh, required force. Uh, and then another subtopic, it was SNTF personal strength and cost. Go down. Uh, SADF uh, 40 day to day the principle. And uh, then there was uh, uh, SADF, SNTF reducing personal cost. 4.6 SADF. Uh, possible internal uh, skills and the uh, 4.7 SADF aging combat service and then 4.8 SADF uh, rank inflation and then there was an input from the deputy minister uh, concluding remarks by the presenters uh, right we go down And then there was uh, observations um, uh, by the committee. All right, go down. And then the recommendations. All right. And then the report uh, should write colleagues. I, I don't know if there are any issues um, uh, to look at. Let's look at the observations. Can you take us through the observations uh, mm. and, and the recommendations? Good evening, um, Chair. Um, I can take you through the observations and recommendations quickly. Please do, uh, Dr. Vele Mianse van Respect. All right, Chair, in terms of uh, observations, the first one relates to uh, one of the main issues raised by members was the need to move forward from, from the untenable situation um, and with, for the need for short term strategies to be developed to assist the SA and the end, um, especially based on the things that was learned in the symposium. Uh, secondly, uh, based on the input specifically from Mr. Heitman, a question was asked whether the SAMF still really needs the SA Military Health Services as an independent arm of service, uh, given the funding challenges uh, of this arm of service. Thirdly, 
Although it was previously observed by the Minister of Defence that we should not have another defence review, members felt that there is a need for uh, urgent engagement on how to take the defence force forward. Uh, next, the uh, suggestion was made that the Joint Standing Committee of Defence needs to recommend to the Ministry that the DOD should submit a memorandum to Cabinet to obtain political clarity on what kind of SAM we, we need and where such support will come from, and specifically relates to financial support as well. Um, next, concern was expressed that little of the 1998 defense review and even fewer of the, of the latest 2015 defense review uh, of those recommendations were actually implemented. And it was questioned whether it was an issue of non-implementation due to resource scarcity uh, or whether it was due to an unwillingness to implement. Uh, next, the observation was that while there was an engagement, uh, I'm sorry, while there was an agreement that certain members should exit the SNDF, uh, members um, said that this should be done in a humane way, and questions remained as to how exactly these members should be exited from the system. Another observation, uh, one of the important takeaways was the view uh, that insisting on 75,000 members as a force strength for the SNDF is unsustainable and the DOD should consider reviewing this position. Uh, furthermore, it was also uh, important um, for the SNDF that the SNDF should not be doing every, uh, <clears throat> everything and should focus on certain activities and considerations should be given to the upfront funding of these activities. Uh, the issue of proper human capital management was also stressed and the example used included the uh, placing of people on long-term leave suspension uh, with pay where some of the periods extended 12 months at a, at a very high cost to the Department of Defense that was raised by Dr. Candido. Um, the committee also uh, noted um, consideration should be given to the suggestion. Can you scroll, scroll down, please scroll down. You have stopped your scrolling. Right, okay. Right, um, thanks, Gunther. Uh, Considerations should also be given to the suggestion that the DOD should develop and adopt a force structure planning model with related indicators to follow whether the department is achieving these targets. Uh, second from last, it was stressed that National Treasury's view that any proposed plan that does not deal decisively with the department's personnel headcount, force design, and conditions of service of the SNA members is unlikely to succeed in assisting the department to operate within the compensation of employee ceiling. It is in this context that the issues of force design and force structure should be considered. Um, and the last observation, one of the main concerns regarding the uh, substantive for, uh, portion of the budget allocated to compensation of employees is that it crowds out other critical areas um, and in the process, the SNDF, SNDF stands to lose more and more defense capabilities which will weaken the institution. Uh, those observations then take us to the three key recommendations. Firstly, the committee plan a meeting with the chief of the SNF to brief it on the force design and force structure in the fourth term program based on the various interactions to date. And uh, as members are aware, that happened in Pretoria. And the second recommendation there, uh, the committee recognizes the urgency of addressing concerns around force design and force structure, specifically in the current fiscal environment. As such, there should be a follow-up discussion with the SANDF on the force design and force structure to facilitate agreement on the concept, the challenges, developing options on the way forward, uh, the sector in the short, medium, and long-term objectives and timelines. Um, and this would then relate to the upcoming meeting schedule for the first meeting of next year. Um, lastly, Chair, the last recommendation was the committee resolve to engage the department further on that plan and projections to sweat assets uh, to assist with the funding of certain activi activities. Um, thank you, Chair. Those are the uh, observations and recommendations. Thank you so much. Colleagues, is there anything that um, you think is not fit to be added uh, to be in this report or that was incorrectly uh, captured? Uh, Chairperson, just from my side, I think it was it was correctly captured and especially the observations is actually very good. There's nothing wrong with the three key uh, recommendations, but I think if you look at the, at the observations, uh, uh, there should be 
a number of, uh, of, of additional recommendations following from the observation. Uh, and I think we must just make, because my, my biggest concern is we've had a, a wonderful day uh, and, and, and wonderful session and, and great comments and, and our observations are, are brilliant. But we must not only depend on the three that we have mentioned, because we know what happened in, in Pretoria. Um, you know, my experience from Pretoria was, listen, you know, we can't, we, we can't cut on, on cost of employees. So, so in other words, you know, we are stuck. It's either we get the money or not. And there's, no, there's, there's not many alternatives that was placed on the table. Um, and we know that, you know, if we stick to that, then National Treasury will not get closer and we will not be able to deal with all these challenges as a, as a committee and in terms of, of our observation. So, so somehow we must, we must try to put more of those into detail um, uh, uh, recommendations by the committee in terms of how we will interact with that and what we will come up. Um, because, you know, if we only, if we only <coughs> interact with the department and with the chief of the SNDF and TECDEF, um, you, you know, maybe we will just hear whatever we have heard in the past. Uh, and no. we know that, 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 that we cannot go that way. So. I don't know how we're going to do, deal with that. I'll I'll uh, I'll wait for your for your guidance on that. But somehow we must just make sure that this does not get stagnated again, and and the next term, you know, we say, you know, we have still not moved forward. Mr. Mader, are you not confusing this uh, minute, this report, with the report of the Lehuta? Is the report on? I, the, I know, the I know. I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm I'm very much aware of that, uh, yes. and I don't. To, to preempt, uh, I mean, at this stage, we know already what happened with the with the La hotline. We know what happened in terms of yeah. our, our our interaction with force design and force structure. Uh, so all that all that I'm saying is that you know those three recommendations, key recommendations, is fantastic. But if you look at the at our observation, I think there should be more. Um, let's call it micro um, uh, uh, recommendations coming out, and not only this. Uh, recommendations that, that you know the three is basically macro recommendations yes they they, they are macro mr mare because remember this was a an yeah, information yeah. step this was an information sharing uh, session right yeah yeah and, yeah i'm i'm yeah. I'm, a, I'm aware of that i i just don't want us to lose what we okay. have observed let, 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 let's go let's go back to the observations check uh, what of the what in the observation you must lift Hi guys, to, I'm there to recommendations. All right, let's look at the observations. And uh, okay, let's 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 start with the first one. Um, is there anything we should uh, move forward as a recommendation? And uh, I think it's the, the I think the first one is covered uh, yeah, in the key yeah. resolutions, right? Yeah. And then yeah. the second one. And uh, I think uh, that the a uh, a uh, 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 question uh, whether the SNDF really needs the the South African military health uh, uh, service as an independent. I want to leave it at that uh, as an observation yeah. and not take it forward, yeah. right? Yeah. Because we have not canvassed it um, uh, yeah. beyond this, right? Yeah. And then we go to the third pro pro uh, paragraph. Although yeah. it was previously observed by the Minister of Defense that we should not have another defense review soon, the general view was that there needs to be an urgent engagement on how to take the defense uh, force uh, forward. Uh, 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 Dr. Doc, uh, what do you read of this? Uh, uh, is not uh, covered by the, in, the, by the, in the three key recommendations. I'm sorry, Chair, I just lost you there for a second. Um, which one are you referring the, to the, now? The, 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 the third, we're, we're looking at whether uh, the third uh, observation, the third point, bullet under observation, needed to be, is not covered by the three uh, key rec recommendations below. Chair, I think that one um, uh, around urgent engagement, uh, knowing what we know now, there has been further engagements. Uh, already, and there's a, a, a plan engagement of, uh, for the first meeting in January. So um, I, I think 
we've done justice to that in the sense um, that we've moved forward on it. And I, I think it should be covered by the by the three key overarching one. I think uh, there are more specific ones below that Mr. Murray might refer to where we could have specific, no. more specific recommendations. No, it's fine. Let's look to the fourth paragraph. A, a suggestion was made that the GSCD needs to recommend to the ministry that the DOD should submit a memorandum to cabinet to obtain political clarity on what kind of SNDF we need and where such uh, support will come from. I, I think this one would be covered in the in the Huta, yeah. uh, uh, what you call yeah. uh, recommendations. Uh, am I wrong, uh, uh, yes. uh, colleagues? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. leave that. We leave this as is, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A concern was expressed that leaking of the 1998 defense review and even fewer of the uh, 20. 15 defense review recommendations were implemented, and it was questioned whether it was an issue of non-implementation due to, to resource scarcity or whether it was due to an unwillingness to implement. I think it's better we flag this just like this. Yeah. Right? Okay. I don't think they, okay. we must, rec we must uh, yeah. recommend anything. It's good leaving it as a, leaving it at, at, as a statement. Right? Let's move to the next paragraph. Yeah. While there was an there was agreement that certain members should ex exit the SNDF and that this should be done in a very humane way, question was, uh, remained how exactly this should be done and where the funding for such exit mechanism would come from. I know this too also was a subject of discussion in the Nehuta and it continues to be a subject of um, our oversight. Um, even post before and post the whole time. Do you want to say? Do you want us to make I, any recommendation on this? I think yes, so, sir, Mark? because 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 in this is, is going to be yeah, one of the critical things the going process. forward um, yeah. is the strength of the of the SNDF and how we're going to uh, fund the 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 strength, but also the exit mechanisms. And I think there we need to do more modelling on our side and also interaction with national treasury. Um, because we know that if they don't give us more money, the exits, uh, 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 um, you know, employees, uh, I mean, how, how are we going to do that? So, so you're going to have two, two poles that will never come together. And, and somehow we have to make it the recommendation of us on how to move forward on, on the whole issue of, of cost of employees. I, I agree. Um, I agree with you, Mr. Mare, but are we in a position to do so now? No, well, well, we can just make a recommendation in terms of what we must do going to the future um, so that it is something that we are flagging in the recommendations, whether it is, oh, it is beginning of next year or, or what, but that is just something that we, through the recommendations, m flag for us to either do a study uh, or, or ask Valhalla to, to do investigation or some research, him and Peter, for us. Um, or, or that we interact with National Treasury, uh, but it, it, it seems like, you know, we cannot only wait for, for the department to, to say, no, no, we stick to our 75,000. Um, somehow we will have to apply our own minds in that as well and take some guidance and lead in that. I, I think it may be along the lines that the, the COE continues to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. Are we saying something on COEs? Can I look at the recommendations below? I, I hear you. What, what I hear what uh, yeah. can I let's go to the recommendation and check if there's any recommendation that talks to COEs compensation of employees. No, there's none. Seven. Yeah, I, I agree. Fourth, fourth I think design, we'll, but but yes. but in terms of the recommendations, we're basically saying. You know, uh, the SCNDF must tell us, and 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 currently uh, we know what they will tell us, um, and that will yeah, not take us yeah. forward. I think they must tell us how they are addressing uh, the COE, uh, yeah, the conflict of employees. Yeah, uh, I think let's 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 leave that as a as a as, as, as a recommendation because we're already starting um, uh, to look at it. You know, the HR. HR plan of department. Yeah, and, and but, I think the uh, rest... Velem, and then the rest is fine. Yeah, right. yeah. I, the, I, the, I just the, want to say, I just want to say, in 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 further of of the observations that I've picked up, it's all staff related and cost of employees related and national treasury related. 
because it, it seems like in terms of our second last one, you know, National Treasury. So, so and, and in terms of the force design, yes, it's, it's in structure, it is in the recommendations, but, but our recommendations only refer to basically the SNDF that must tell us. Uh, and, and nowhere do we include National Treasury, for instance, and interactions, because somehow, if we feel confident that we must stick to the 75,000, then we have to interact with National Treasury as well and put, put pressure on them. And that doesn't, I don't t take that from, you the, see, from the recommendations. You see, Mr. Maray, I, I thought uh, that uh, if you look at uh, the second paragraph, uh, yeah. post design and post structure, uh, I, I thought that specifically talks to uh, a, the the HR and other issues. Yes, but it's only, it, it's only, see. but yes. it only refers to follow up discussions with the SNDF. That's it. Uh, okay. Um, all right, uh, 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 Willem and, and, and Peter, can you assist uh, on this one? How how do we uh, bring that observation into the recommendation? And that that is the issue. Yeah. So so that it, it's clear that um, we are also uh, concerned about the, the 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 compensation of employees and the yeah. versus. Uh, the ceiling place yeah. on the Department of Defense by Treasury. Yeah, yeah. My concern is we will get to to next year's budget, uh, and we will move move no further, and we will see the cost of employees increase, and the and the, and the cut by the by the National Treasury further, um, and and I mean you know we just cannot allow that. All right. So we'll find one. Uh, we'll find one that uh, would. Talk to that. I think the colleagues will craft it, and, and then I will yeah. send it to you for for your comments before yeah, we incorporate it yeah. into, into the report. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's fine. Let's let's leave it at that. And, uh, I'll, I'll okay. craft. We'll craft one. Uh, you know, yes. uh, paragraph that speaks to that, and then yeah. we I do a round okay. robin on it. Okay. I will leave it at that for now, I'm colleagues. I'm you. I'm yeah. Happy. Thank you so much. Students support the report. Yes as with, with this uh, amend, amendment? Absolutely, 100%. I so move. Uh, it's moved by Mr. Mare, uh, seconded by? I second it. Uh, Ms. Baclet uh, seconds it. Thank you so much. Let's go to the, the uh, report on the Lihuta. Chair? Mr. Kunta, Chair? yes, sir. The presenters yes, are Kunta. Um, ready now. The presenters. The oh, the, the presenters are ready. Yeah. All right. Okay. Can, let's suspend our discussion on the report. Uh, we've done the minutes. We've done the first report. And we're left with the two reports. Let's suspend the discussion on those and then take uh, and welcome the colleagues from the South African Unintegrated Forces United Front. And um, they wrote to the speaker, uh, basically saying that um, they were discriminated in 1995, and despite all efforts to bring their issue to the attention of uh, uh, the authorities, and uh, nothing uh, has uh, happened, and no one has come back to them with the, the answer. <coughs> and, and, the, and the speaker, upon receiving uh, their uh, memorandum stroke letter, uh, she then referred that uh, to us for uh, processing. Processing means um, affording uh, the colleagues from the South African Unintegrated Forces United Front to make a presentation to us and state their case. We will engage and, uh, uh, with them, uh, ask questions of clarity, uh, discuss uh, the, the, the presentation they are, put, they are putting forward. And uh, once we, we are done with that, we then formulate our own uh, opinion on the matter and then report uh, to the speaker. Let me welcome uh, the colleagues. I said uh, at the beginning that they were, but they were not part of the meeting then. They were still experiencing some technical uh, challenges that um, 
in, in, in this age, this is how we meet. And uh, there's technology that is able to bring people from all over the place, um, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, talk amongst themselves. And uh, right now, due to COVID, we are conducting a hybrid, uh, uh, what you call a, a meeting, a, a form of a meeting <clears throat> where some members are in parliament, others are linked up from, uh, you know, via this uh, platform, a virtual platform. And that works for us. And I'm so, sorry that we couldn't meet with you physically. But uh, that's now the way of life. It looks as though uh, this is how Parliament will work uh, going forward. And uh, at least it helps us to be able to uh, meet uh, people wherever they are through this platform. We welcome uh, you uh, 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 our, as our guest and, uh, and presenters uh, today. You would uh, indicate the, the people who will be making a presentation and then tell us uh, who you are. And uh, what we know so far is that you are ex SADF uh, members and, uh, uh, and, and ex KwaZulu Natal uh, uh, Self Protection Unit uh, members who think they have a claim uh, to integration, but they were not integrated given that by then, uh, the, I think they say because they were discriminated, they'll tell us how they were discriminated, that they could not be integrated into the process. Uh, so I can see David Collins. Uh, David Collins, I don't know if it is him who's going to take us the, uh, through the presentation, but let me welcome you colleagues and you may then introduce yourself and then launch into the presentation. Uh, over to you colleagues. My name is Sir uh, I'm the you, chairman. You know, I'm the chairman of the committee. Uh, evening, the owners, and then uh, evening, the leaders. As it has been indicated, my name is David Collins. I'm a former member of South African Defence Force, who were not integrated uh, during the 1994 integration. Uh, based on the concern raised and the document that has been provided and supplied, I believe that you can see the kind of communication and efforts that we made since 1995 to date. And then uh, you could see how disappointed we have been. We have been ignored, we have been undermined, we have been uh, disregarded. Even though, regardless of the efforts that we made to communicate with our leaders. Summarily, let me take us back to who we are and where we are coming from. In the first place, yes, we are part and parcel of the people who protected the country during that time. We are part and parcel of the people who voted for the current for the government. And then we are also members of different political parties in South Africa. But uh, nevertheless, none of our leaders has made effort to listen to us. The point that we would like to, fake, to, to, to stay on is the issue of integration. We are so surprised to hear that uh, we were not integrated based on the fact that uh, we don't know the criteria that has been used to integrate all other members that are in the South African National Defense Force for now. We don't know where does that come from and what was the criteria. I think it's muted. Yeah, yeah, because it's on the yeah, because it's it's, it's on the system. You have muted yourself, uh, uh, Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins, we have lost you. Yes. I think there's a reception, there's a network problem. 
and uh, there is a network problem and we have lost him uh, completely. Uh, we have lost him completely, he's not on the, on the screen. We're not on the screen yet. All right. <clears throat> so let's, colleagues, uh, please, let's bear with them. Uh, I'm sure they've uh, uh, a network uh, problem. And uh, I think they are experiencing what uh, Honorable Lekwase used to experience. Uh, Lekwase, are you okay there? Yes, I am fine, Chair. All right, good. Okay. Chair, it, uh, Chair. Yes, sir. Yes, Tabo. It, it, it's more or less the same situation with uh, the Quasar. Remember the first meeting we we are supposed to have with them? Because we are back, huh? We yes, are back. I like you. Honor? Right, Tabo. Okay. okay. We are back. Are back uh, Mr. Uh, okay, Ms. I'm back, right. the Honor. This okay. is the indication just, of what we... Okay, all right. You were, we were actually saying you don't know what criteria was used. Okay, continue from there. I can see you, Mr. Collins. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. I believe that we are all aware of the labor relations act. Okay, can, 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 can you do this? In case of Collins, NPC. Collins, yes, uh, Collins, do this. Switch off your, no, your switch off your video. Switch off your. We can hear you, and uh, switch off your your video. Your the sound quality will be better. Yes, like yes. yes. No, no, I'm saying switch. No, no, I'm saying yes, switch sir. off your video, Mr. Collins. Switch off your video, then the sound quality will be better. Okay. Can you hear me now? No, 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 I must not see you. Yes, sir. Switch off. No, no. I'm asking you to switch off your video. Right. Can you? Then you can talk. Well, he just disappears. When, when you ask him to switch off the video and then... The system kicks him out uh, completely. Um, all right. So it, it does not look like we we are making any headway. Chabo, you were still explaining that um, is the same um, uh, uh, experience that the Khoisan. Yeah, at, yeah. Um, Remember that the, they they struggled with. Locking in, and uh, it was a bit of a challenge, a technological challenge as well. Yeah, no, it's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, I'm a bit. Uh, we're back now. Now you you are okay. Now just keep it that way. You can talk. Keep it that way. Don't open the video. Keep it that way. Okay. Yes, I was indicated, guys. This is another challenge that we are having. That uh, no, we guys. requested that. Sorry, 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 not guys. Uh, okay, not my guys. apology, my apology, the honor. Thank you. My apology, the honor. I say That's this is the comes, challenge eh? that this is the challenge that we are having in terms of facility. That is what we requested. Then, uh, in terms of the Labor Relations Act, there should be a consultation process that should be taken with reason given. A written reason should be given. What is the, ch the reason why the dismissal has to take place. And the point number two is the criteria that is going to be used to dismiss those people. Most unfortunately to us, we do have people that were retained in the South African Defense Force. We have people who were dismissed, but we don't know what was the criteria that was used to select those people. Similar to the point of other formations, we don't know that uh, what is the criteria that was used to integrate those other forces into the South African National Defense Force. 
The point there is to indicate whereby we were unfairly discriminated. Because of uh, we should have at least been provided with reasons, written reasons according to the Labor Relations Act. And a point, the another point is we should have at least given the opportunity to be represented. If we don't have the union like by that time, we should have at least have a workers forum, which it was not there. That is the reason why we are saying we have been unfairly treated. And then it carried on. But the other point that I could raise just to summarize our concern is fraud and corruption. We are quietly aware, according to the according to the report that has been submitted, that yes, there were people that were demobilized. There were people who received the special pension. Some of them are supposed to pay back the money that were awarded to them. Unfortunately, when looking into us in terms of pensions, we are aware that there were certain other forces that were granted the GEF pension. But unfortunately, to the former South African Defense Force members, we got only the salary of that man. You understand? That is the reason why we peruse our leaders to say, can we sit down and talk about this? But none of our leaders, people who we voted, people who we secured during the riot, people who we protected, unfortunately, none of them seems to take care of us or to listen, to give us a chance to present our complaints. When looking into our memorandum that has been submitted, it's so long. And uh, since, 1990, since 1995 to date, it's plus minus 25 years, none of our government um, officials are prepared to listen to us up until today. Today we have been given an opportunity, but unfortunately due to lack of facilities, we cannot present our case properly. But I believe based on points that I have mentioned here, integration and fairly discrimination, fraud and corruption, we've got some points that we can speak to it and decide. I thank you. Probably I think that is basically the summary of our concern. I thank okay, you. No, th thank you, thank you so much, um, uh, Mr. Collins. Um, how were you dismissed? Uh, what form did it take? When, when were, when were, you, when were you dismissed, and how were you dismissed? Well, as indicated, I was dismissed 1995, immediately after the elections. After all the dust has settled, that is where now we were dismissed without any further consultation, without knowing the reason, without knowing any criteria that is going to be used. We don't know if the people who were retained, was it because of their age, was it because of their conduct, or was it because of their qualifications? That is our point of concern. Were, were you on contract? Uh, maybe let's start, let's talk about yourself. When you joined, when, when did you join the SADF? And uh, and uh, and then, uh, what was the agreement? What the, the nature of con was it? Were you on contract, or you were on, uh, employed on permanent basis? I was on contract, but if you can go through the final report, but, it but indicated but that the contract was as much as the the, 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 the the permanent employees because of it was always renewed then we have been regarded as a permanent employees. You can okay. go through so it you, into the, how, how, in, in, how into the final was, report. How long was your contract? Let, let's talk about yourself so that we can get a sense of uh, the people who were dis, uh, dismissed at that time. And uh, uh, when were you uh, employed uh, on contract and how long was the contract? Mr. Collins? Mr. Collins? Mr. Collins? Mr. Collins? Can you unmute your system, Mr. Collins? Mr. 
Mr. Collins? Yes, Mr. Collins? Honor, we are having a challenge with technical problems here. Okay. Yes, the now, before, I'm, I'm, okay, the question I was actually asking, we are trying to under, to see the nature of the problem through your own circumstances. I'm asking, yeah. uh, when were you employed as a, as, as a soldier? And uh, what unit uh, did you belong to? Uh, what was your prefix? And uh, and uh, what was the nature of of your contract? How the the, the how long the co your, your contract was? Well, uh, personally, I was uh, employed in the defense in 1992, and then right. uh, I so, was I was serving to a contract, and the prefix was uh, PY. All right, 1992, and the uh, contract yeah. was for two years, eh? A two year contract. Two -year contract. Yeah. And then your your pre, your prefix was pre, was py, 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 py. Yes, py. All right. So when 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 the contract ended, is the end when you were, when you got dismissed? Yes. yes um, in other words, you served out you served out the, the the whole two years. You served out the whole term of the contract. Yes, your honour. All right. So at the point, the integration took place um, when you already left uh, the when you already exited the system when your contract no. already expired. No. Right. No. Integration yes. took integration took place from 1993. Right, and you are still stepping out your contract. I was still in the contract. Sure. Okay. I was still in, we were still in the contract by that time. All, right. All the formations, non statutory forces, for them to go through training, they got training through us. That is where now, after everything has settled now, they know all the procedures and everything. That is where now the government decided to dismiss us. No, now, 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 we, now we know who, who the, 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 the circumstances under which you, you, you were uh, released from the SADF. Colleagues, the matter is now on the table. Chair? Yes, Mr. Hwase? I also want to get this clear. Is Mr. Collins saying what he was dismissed or the contract came to an end? Because you asked him two questions and he, he said to you, he served the two years and then the contract came to an end. And then again, he's saying he was not integrated. Secondly, he is saying to us that he will not be able to make a full submission. He'll only give us a summary. So I want to ask him if we will be doing justice to handle his issue based on the summary that he's giving us while he's not giving us everything that he had to submit. Thank yes, you. Mr. Collins. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kwasi. Mr. Collins. Thank you, the honor. I like the question. What we said, we have been dismissed and fairly dismissed. Based on the point that I have indicated earlier, that uh, yes, according to the Labor Relations Act, consultations are supposed to be made. The criteria that was going to be used should be state, clearly stated in a written form, and the reasons should be provided. And then we are also supposed to have representation. As I, the last point was, yes, the integration started 1993 before the contract could be ended. All right. Okay. Any other question, uh, colleague? Um, chairperson, can I can I just ask from my side? Um, was there any? Was there any um, promises made or undertakings given at the time um, when the training was taking place of the non statutory forces members? And were there any expectations created um, that they will be integrated? 
um, because obviously I think the, the one thing that we are sitting with is on the one side, um, there's been clearly a, a contractual, there was a contractual agreement, although it was in the it, prior to that, that was, was, was renewed um, um, from time to time, but you still sit with a situation where the contract came to an end. So that is a, a legal relationship. Um, and, and if there are not binding and um, kind of a commitment, or even if it's a verbal commitment, that, that you guys will be integrated uh, or at least considered for integration, um, uh, then, then, then we can start to work with some, something. Um, because I think that if we go down the route of, of saying it was unfairly, um, then obviously you must go back and look at the legislation at the time. Um, and, and, and then obviously, you know, uh, you know that, that is a different story. And then we have to, you know, go into that avenue. So, so um, uh, you know, I just wanted to more understand uh, whether there was any expectations created, you know, that you guys would have been integrated uh, at the time uh, when your contract was running out. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Honor Mare. And um, before I invite uh, Mr. Collins to re respond, may I? Uh, I'll come back to Tabu. Uh, oh, you have your hands up. Okay. All right. Okay. Colleagues, I just want I want to take a question at a time uh, so that uh, we get to understand exactly their their thinking. And uh, 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 instead of taking a batch of them. And um, Mr. Marais asked the question, I'm going to invite them back on the platform to reply. Um, uh, Velen and, uh, and Peter, and uh, I grant you, you can also ask uh, uh, questions um, uh, as well in, in, in this arrangement. All right, uh, can you respond to Mr. Mr. Mar Collins? To Mr. Mare's question, was any promise made or undertake? Was any promise uh, made uh, or expectations created that uh, your term will be expand will be extended beyond uh, uh, the term of two years? If yes, for 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 how long, and uh, and so on. Uh, it's now up on you to ask. Mr. Collins? Oh, they've disappeared. They've disappeared. Oh, you're back now. Mr. Collins, are you back? I think they have, uh, they have serious uh, challenges in their network and we can't um, hear their case very well. Um, I can recognize the hand of Ryder, uh, my co-chair, uh, Alec. Uh, Martha's hand is also up and Tabu Mutle's hand is also up. And, um, and uh, oh, yes, uh, that's right, I saw it. Uh, uh, Mr. Collins, are you back? Yes, right, I saw it, yes. Mr. Collins, are you back? He's not back, Chair. I don't think this is working. He really has a problem. Yeah, it's not working, eh? Mm. All right, colleagues. Um, yeah, they are kicked out of the meeting, Chair. I don't see them here anymore. Yeah, all right. Colleagues, let's discuss it. Uh, now I can take a batch um, of, of, of questions. I will start with you, Alec uh, Chamberlain, uh, and then go to Ryder, and then uh, Mutle, and then Baclet, uh, in that order, and then Modisa. Uh, Honorable Chamberlain, my co chair. Yeah, th th thanks a lot, Chairperson. Uh, uh, um, Honorable Noah actually asked me many of the questions that I wanted to ask. 
But the other thing I like to know is how what was the balance of the contract when it was terminated, and uh, yeah, and based on whatever question, will be were they compensated for the for the remainder of the contract? There's something that is called a payment in lieu of notice. You know, it works mostly in the in labor relations. I'm not sure. Uh, if the Amish, it's uh, it's run through the <clears throat> through the same uh, act. I'm 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 not quite sure. So that is what I want to establish. Uh, what was what was the balance uh, of Mr. the contract of termination? Yeah, Mr. Chamberlain, th this is what he said. He said he was employed uh, in in 1992. Uh, uh, from 1992 to 1994, and he was in a two-year contract. So he served out uh, his term. Maybe we we'll still pose that question at least for other members uh, of his organization. And uh, Tim, uh, Peter, can you make note of this question that uh, Mr. Chabeling raised? That even though he has answered it, maybe other members uh, of his team uh, may um, you know, be able to answer um, uh, the question. And then let's go to um, Mr. Uh, Martha Bartlett. Yeah, just, just a little bit, Chairperson. My goal, my understanding is that if your contract lapses, then you have yeah. no, con there's no contract contractual obligation between you and your employer. Because the argument exactly was the that point, it yeah. will take 24 months. So Correct. after 24 months, if you are called back, you're very lucky. And if you are not, it's still okay because your term has, has lapsed. You know, otherwise, yeah. otherwise, anybody who is doing a contract work in the country will say that, you know, if you appoint me as a contractor, then I become permanent. You cannot terminate the contract. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, we have a, a legal team of parliament they need also to give us an advice on a matter like this one. You know? yeah. And that if, yeah. if, for instance, whatever falls off, then what will be the next step that they'll, that, that, that they'll have to take? Then the matters will be go to the Constitutional Court and challenge this thing. Because you okay. see our, yeah. Mm. Okay, no, th thank you so much for that. Are you, are you done, are you done, Chamberlain? No, I'm yes, I'm done. Mr. Thank you so much, Mr. Raider. And then after Raider, I'll go to my backlet. Mr. Raider. Okay, thank you, Chief. Yeah, thanks very much. Look, I, I think it's a, it should be a fairly simple question. Um, and I think Mr. Murray and Mr. Chabaling have both, uh, um, uh, you know, got to the heart of, the, of this particular problem. And the fact is that there was a contract in place. Uh, the contract ended. In terms of the law at the time, uh, you know, that was where things ended. Now, Chairperson, I have just in the last five minutes turned around here in my office and gone through my paperwork. And um, so I, I, I finished with the South African Defence Force in 1991 uh, was, when, was when my service terminated with them. They issued me with that certificate on termination. Um, and, you know, that was one thing that was always in order. The paperwork was always there. And there's a certificate and it says exactly the details and gives the details of, 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 of when I was released, etc. So the question... Sorry, you are breaking, uh, Mr. Ryder. You are making a... Let him switch off the camera. Switch off the camera, Mr. Ryder. Yeah, switch off the camera, Mr. Ryder. Yes. Ah, thank yeah. you, Paul. Okay. Now come back thank again. Yes. So you are saying you are saying the sure. certificate would uh, give the de all the details, including the reason for termination. Absolutely, there, there must be some sort of paperwork. I mean, I certainly wouldn't leave leave, leave any job without some piece of paper to say, you know, you in or you're out or, or whatever. There, there must be some clarity. So, so what documentation was given, um, and that will certainly help us. Now, it's not my recollection that integration started in 1993 already, but, um, you know, fair, fair enough. Um, I, I just feel that if we could get a force number, 
He didn't answer your question as to what unit he was assigned to. Um, and there are some probing questions that we could get some background from the gentleman. If only we had an opportunity to get a no, decent connection. Mr. Writer, Mr. Writer, can, can you, the key. Mr. Writer, can you assist us with the, the, the questions that would give us the whole picture? Is the first number, the, the unit? First number, and, and the, the unit that he was assigned unit. to. And then what, uh, okay. what documentation was given when he, when, he, when he finished? Okay, that's fine. Thank you so much. I think that helps when we write back to them. All right, and uh, Martha Bartlett? Yes, I really don't know whether they help for us to ask this question. Uh, why Mr. Polo is not unless he's represented by the other team? Because uh, I didn't understand the whole scenario. We actually want him to represent the team and speak about the team, but now he spoke about himself. And I think it would be better for us also to have a meeting after this. But then we must get all the documents and all the things that he said that I have. Because really now I don't understand the whole scenario. Thanks, Okay, no, it's thank not you so that much. He said don't want to entertain it, but I mean when we, when we have clarity on all the issues. Okay. Thank Thanks, uh, Ms. Bartlett. Thank you so much. Uh, Tabo, Honorable Tabo Mutlin. Yeah, th thank you, Chair. Uh, it, it's unfortunate that uh, uh, they are no longer in the meeting. I just wanted to get clarity when, uh, when he said uh, uh, seemingly they are not getting any kind of uh, assistance with regard to these issues that they are raising. And he further said uh, they were protecting uh, people. I'm not sure who was uh, he referring to as uh, we all know that uh, the South African Defense Force never protected our people. But my question, my, my question, Chair, was with regard to their first demand of uh, integration. Uh, I wanted to find out from them as to where were they during the integration process? If they were there, what step have they taken? What have they done basically to ensure that uh, they are not overtaken by events? Uh, and why are they now raising these issues with us now? Uh, if they did uh, have an opportunity to engage with that process then. But unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, uh, they are not here to respond. So I will just pause there. Okay. No, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mote. Honorable Motisa. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, with regard to the contract, I would have also wanted to say uh, in the uh, Defense Force, even with the previous setup, uh, there has never been permanent contracts for forces. What happens is that the first two years of the contract is actually uh, for training. Thereafter, you are offered continuous uh, contracts, which is what happened in the SADAF and it continues to happen currently in the SANDF. Therefore, the two years that he speaks of where he says he was employed, it could have been the first two years of training in the military. Secondly, Chair, I think what we also need to look at is the laws uh, that would have taken place during the integration. Uh, we also need to then be assisted with it that uh, where the members, as he's complaining, that they were dismissed and were not taken through the integration, did they comply and did they qualify with, with the regulations of what was required at that particular time uh, when integration was taking place? I think here we need not be general. Uh, about these issues. We need then to be able to look into, into the law, apply our minds into it, and, and I think that will, will assist us moving forward. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Motise. And uh, Honorable Shelembe. Yes, sir. Uh, Chairperson, my, my concern is what uh, they have raised that are uh, they were not uh, informed of the reasons why they were, I mean, dismissed. So now maybe we need to look at that as a point that 
at that time, were they informed of, I mean, of their dismissal? And they also raised the issue that uh, because they were not sort of, I mean, the unions or something. I think if, I mean, uh, they were not informed of the reason, I think we owe them an explanation why they were not, I mean, um, informed of their dismissal. If maybe you can look at that and then uh, clarify it and respond back to them to say, okay, you are informed if they were informed. If they were not informed, we need to ask ourselves why they were not informed. Because the, the more they speak, they say it was unfair because... We have because lost you, uh, how they, I mean, uh, Hello? Yes, we have lost you. Uh, come back. Yes. You must go to the mountains again. You must go to the mountains again. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it will help him. Can you hear me? Yes, Can you yes. hear me now? Yeah, now it's fine. All right. You can talk. The quality the sound is yeah. okay now. Yeah. Yeah. So, Chairperson, um, I want to emphasize on what I mean they were saying that they, 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 are, they were not informed as to why they were not integrated. So it's like they want the reason why they were not integrated. Maybe if maybe as a committee we look at that and see, look at back whether they were informed or they were not informed. If they are telling the truth that they were not informed, I think we need now to, to do something. We owe them an answer, I mean, to say, yes, we are not informed. These are the reasons you are not informed. Let's look at that, the issue of not being informed of their dismissal and then how they were selected to be not integrated to the system. Thank you. All right. Okay. Colleagues, uh, I think we, let me just check if, I think we have covered all colleagues, all hands that uh, were up. So what we'll do, we'll prepare um, a set of questions that uh, will send them to, to the team so that when we meet with them, they come and deal with those questions and the questions that will arise on the day. I agree with you that these questions that we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, posed will certainly give light to the team and uh, will help us make a decision uh, on the way forward. So let's leave it at that for now and uh, until uh, further notice. It means that if would, they will not be able to meet with these guys, with these colleagues, uh, with these ex-soldiers uh, at any time between now and the end of the year, because I think this is the last meeting of this uh, of the John Stanley Committee. All right, so let's leave it at that for now. But in between, we'll be exchanging emails. I will also ask them to give us a list of their members and uh, the Air Force numbers, their ID numbers, and their prefix, and, and, and whether they were on contract or not. If on contract, how long was the contract? And uh, what was the start date and the end date? And uh, so that at least on paper, we, we get to see the nature of relationship that each one of them had with the South African Defense Force at the time, and whether, uh, given that, there was any expectation that uh, after a two-year period or whatever period they served, they would then be uh, employed on a permanent basis. But I know that is never automatic that after serving a two-year period, you would get employment on a permanent basis. It's based on your performance and, uh, you know, and your conduct at work that you are given a, 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 a post, uh, you get absorbed uh, on a permanent basis. It's never automatic. And um, so I think their case for now, in my view, I've not looked at the issues, uh, you know, closely. It's similar to the case that the concerns raised. The concerns were actually some members had a stint between 79 and, and 81, but they say they were not, they exited in 19, 1981, but they still think they have a claim, uh, you know, and uh, so, so the determining factor here, what was the nature of your 
or employment uh, relationship with the employer at that time. Because it then tells us uh, uh, your, 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 how you would exit uh, the system. Exit on the expiry or you are permanent and you exit upon being fired uh, or retired or when you're deceased and all that. So leave it at that for now. At least this uh, gives us um, uh, a good, uh, way, uh, what you call, um, you know, uh, way of collecting the data that the colleagues are looking for. Let's leave it at that colleagues for now. And we apologize that we couldn't take it any further than this. Let, let's go back colleagues to, to our report. Um, uh, Peter, do you want to say something, Velem? Any observation you want to make before we move? No, Chair, I think in your summary, you have captured what I think we should actually request from them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Velem. Uh, uh, Chair, so from my side, I did some quick reading and it seems like the uh, contract issue around the integration period was the main issue for exclusion, as you mentioned, also with the Khoisan group. So if they can get clarity uh, as per the questions that were posed, if we can get clarity on that, that'll be great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now. All right, let's take us through the report of the Lehuta of the Joint Standing Committee on Defense with the Department of uh, Defense and the SADF on the 16th and 17th. All right, let's go down um, the aim of the Lehuta. Okay, let's look at the aim. The primary aim of the Lehuta was to initiate a discussion that will, result, that will result in the development of an implementable reviewable action plan to bring about a defense force structure that is sustainable, commensurate to the threat perception and, fiscal, and fiscally appropriate. So we're initiating that discussion with them, but we were not developing the plan. Uh, they were doing it, but uh, we wanted them to start to look in this direction. All right. And the uh, committee members and, and staff at the uh, these are the committees. Let's look at the members so that uh, we check if all members were there. Because this report will go to parliament. Uh, colleagues, this is the list of uh, the attendance list. All right, uh, okay, uh, go to, uh, scroll down, uh, scroll down, this is our support staff, attendance list, this attendance list of the departmental officials, the minister, the deputy minister. All right, and then this is a program of the day. Uh, and then the opening remarks by Mr. Kaba. Uh, hey, not V, only VC Kaba, right? Uh, correct that. Okay, so, all right, and then you go down, uh, opening remarks by the minister, uh, opening remarks by the chief of the South African Defense Force, a uh, presentation by the ministerial and, the, and, and on the ministerial uh, priorities and the, and the ministerial and, and the chief MTF priorities, all right, presentation on the force structure and the force design, Go down. A presentation on the M, a Minister of uh, Defense and Military Veterans Priorities and the uh, CN, Chief of the Defense Focus Areas. All right, go down. Remarks by the Deputy Minister. Hey, let's see what the Deputy Minister says here. What, what do you say on his remarks? The deputy minister was invited to make a remarks and indicated his understanding of the report and the role of parliament given the separation of powers. A doctrine members engaged them on his views and it was agreed that each arm has its own responsibility should be respected. The minister interpreted the deputy minister's views as representing the frustration of the generals and indicated that the sector had some proposal on how the SNTF can become more self-sustainable. It was agreed that uh, a new defense review is too expensive and it will take too long, and thus an alternative mechanism should be sought on how to address some of the challenges in the DOD, okay? All right, uh, summary of, of the chief of the SNTF, closing remarks by the minister, all right? And uh, 
and then the, the observations. Can you take us through the observations? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> it was on, on, on the, the 16th. Uh, first, the committee raised concerns around the budget cuts and noted the reasons given for it, uh, especially that various attempts have been made by the minister and the chief to engage national treasury and the commander in chief, who is now the president in this regard, without any success. She will recall they've mentioned the various meetings there with the president. Secondly, the committee noted the deliberations to find sustainable solutions to the challenges of the SNDF and suggested that the department goes back to prepare a response to the document tabled by the committee with a particular focus on the possible outcomes proposed for the Lakot Club. Thirdly, it was observed that little mention was made of the role of corruption in the DOD itself and how this can impede the effective implementation of the department's and the SDNP's goals and objectives. It was stressed that the department should pay more attention to gender equality in the senior leadership of the Defence Force and that the committee ex progress, expects progress to be made in this regard. In the first place, one of the key observations related to the fact that there is a dire need for the budget to be prioritised in such a manner that it can ensure that the SENDF stands ever ready to defend the country against the threats as outlined in the presentation and other analysis. It was suggested that a coordinated presentation by the different stakeholders in the security cluster should be presented to the president and cabinet in order to emphasize under decision makers that there's a dire need for political support from the highest echelons to address the security issues in the country, especially as it relates to the challenges facing the SNDF. If, while expressing frustration at the budget constraints and reflecting on the mandate of SNDF to be able to protect Yeah. Sorry, I got lost there. That's F. Uh, while ex ex expressing frustration at the budget constraints and reflecting on the mandate of the SANDF to be able to protect against security threats, members also focus on the need for a sustainable SANDF. Members therefore urge further discussions on exactly what capacity the SANDF require, what can be cut, and at what cost. G. In addition to the concerns around the budget, members also express the need for the DOD to look internally to see what steps it can take to save money and improve the financial position. The DOD was encouraged to remain frugal with its spending. H, the committee agreed with the assertions by the minister and the chief regarding the state of the NEL and its impact on the SNDF and the broader defense industry. They stated that this issue should also be escalated to the highest level. The committee also agreed that the position must be taken that there is a need to salvage the special defense account, given its centrality to acquire prime mission equipment, as the majority of the current PME is outdated and has become obsolete. In order to assist with the rejuvenation of the SNDF, consideration should be given on crafting new and focused recruitment strategies for SNDF and that new networks can possibly be established and relations can be built with, for instance, municipalities to assist in this regard. Members also raised questions around the progress on the, force, on the new force structure as it was recently approved by the Military Command Council and will soon be presented to Cabinet. The committee requested to be kept abreast of developments in this regard and urged finalization of the process. Page up, please. L. Members expressed concern around mission creep for the SANDF and stated that the number of security threats noted by the SANDF during its presentation were not necessarily primary defense function. As such, this should be addressed through enhanced interdepartmental cooperation. Members also agreed with the presentation that the revenue gen generation by the DOD can assist in boosting its current limited budget. The last one there. The committee noted its outstanding engagement with the chief of the, of the chief of the human resources and agreed to follow up on this with a focus on force structure and aspects related to compensation of employees in the department. As we are aware, that meeting was also then later on postponed. So, just the observations of the committee at the next day, the Saturday morning, uh, where the committee was just 
gathered on its own. The first point there, the chairperson expressed his appreciation for an opportunity to engage with the top leadership of the SOM there and noted that the majority of the military command was present. Members commended the Lakotla as they could, could raise issues of concern directly with the senior leadership of the SOM there. The committee expresses concern around apparent stalemate between the DOD and National Treasury to resolve the funding of the COE and provi providing funding to prime mission equipment, especially as it relates to Project Biro, Hotel, and Ufaster. See, concern was expressed on the absence of consensus between the DOD and National Treasury on the rejuvenation plan and its funding. The committee highlighted that this has implica implications for the SENDF succession planning, its ability to attract, retain, and mentor the youth, and to rejuvenate the defense force. And indeed, the committee noted that in the context of concerns around human resources matters, the issue of compensation of employees and related irregular expenditure in this regard should be resolved as a matter of urgency. And that E, concern was expressed that the DOD has not seriously engaged with the proposal to address its challenges, such as the possible incorporation of military hospital with the National Department of Health, resuscitating the member exit mechanism, the MEM, increased use of the MSDS members, addressing rank inflation and addressing supernumeraries, etc. If the com committee noted the need for improved succession planning in the SNDF. And G, the committee suggested that it needs to refocus its efforts to assist in resolving the funding challenges of the DOD. Various options were discussed, which included a cabinet memorandum by the minister, a meeting with the commander in chief, as well as engaging the parliamentary budget office in this regard. And in H, the sentiment was that the SAND feels that their concerns are not really being accommodated, especially where they differ with national treasury on how to manage the allocated funds. And given that this has been an un oncoming for some time, the impression was gained that the top leadership is exasperated with, pol with the political leadership as they felt that issues are not being viewed from their perspective. Then I, it was emphasized that going forward, the committee should take note of the listed threat analysis as presented by the UD when discussing the way forward with the Defense Force, specifically in terms of the force armament needs. And then J, the committee felt that whenever possible, it should participate and or contribute to efforts to rescue the NEL as its demise would impact massively on the SANDF. And then the last one, the committee undertook to investigate the issues around the SDA with a view to ensure its continuation give it its central role to acquire PME. This against the background that the majority of the SNDF's military hardware is nearing obsolescence. In paragraph 13, these are some of the recommendations that we derive. The first one there, the committee resolved that an investigation into the armament situation in the SNDF should be launched by the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, and that the subsequent report can serve as a justification to engage the commander in chief. B, the committee recommended that the issue of the SDA should be taken up with National Treasury, given its centrality to acquire PME, and against the background of possible cancellation penalties, which might be quite substantial. A reference was also made to especially the funding of Project Biro, Hotel, and to a lesser extent, Project Group Easter. It was agreed that once cabinet has agreed with the force design and force structure, the department should alert the committee in order to arrange for the department to present the approved force design and force structure to this committee. And indeed, it was requested that the department should provide it with a report on the legislative impediments to the execution of its mandate. Then E, the committee recommended that the department should enhance its efforts to source alternative revenue, and in addition to the proposal shared with the, with the Joint Commissioner Committee on Defense, it should consider allowing the Defense Force work formation to assist with repair and maintenance of facilities of other government departments at a cost. And the last one, the committee recommended renewed engagement between the DOD and National Treasury under the rejuvenation plan and its funding to ensure 
for sustainability and that two, two departments should report back to Parliament to, on progress in this regard. Chair, that is the observations and the recommendations. There. Disappeared. Chairperson okay, disappeared. Yeah. But he is still in the meeting. Yes. Is he still there? Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, he'll he'll join us. He'll, he'll join us on the way. Where 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 were we now in terms of the program? The recommendations point thirteen. Recommendations point thirteen. Of, I, the, uh, of the La Forte La program. I do a report. Um, All right. I don't have. Uh, Okay, Honourable Mutley, are you going to take chair for the moment? No, I'm still in the meeting. Oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> chair. Are you there? Oh, and, yeah. and, and also, uh, uh, Honourable Intelligence, the court chair is still in no, the meeting. No, colleagues, I was muted. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I did not realize that. Okay. So we have taken. Well, it. Okay, let's go back. All right, let's go back to observations and see if they, um, the the team have. Uh, have, have, has captured um, uh, the observations correctly. All right, number 11. No, no, don't, where are you? Observations number 11, right? Observations on the day, on on the on 16th uh, October. Uh, uh, Chairperson, there are the, the observations that I pick up uh, that was not captured um, from the discussion and that, that is two things. That is the the point where we raised with, first of all, with regards to Project Biro and Hotel, and that must hopefully come into the recommendations as well, where I specifically asked the CFO of DOD whether we have got funding, uh, they have got funding to pay for for um, for Biro and Hotel, uh, because we know that those uh, um, um, Hotel is finished, it's, it's near infinity, and, and Biro, is very close to delivering the first uh, indoor patrol vessel. And he at that stage said there was no funding available. And then we said that we will have to engage with Arms Corps on, on whether they have got funding um, in reserve for that project. So I no, don't see that. No, 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 Mr. Murray, why are we singling those two or three out? Because we're discussing them in the context of uh, armaments. Uh, stroke uh, prime uh, mission equipment in general yeah but i think that this was just very much and i think uh, because why i'm uh, why i'm raising that uh, in the recommendations the, the second recommendations it, it refers to that um and 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 because my my recommendation would have been a recommendation that we must engage with arms corps with regards to the funding um because that was just part of the observation no. that was mentioned specifically now whether we whether we, we we change the observation because it's in the observation, um, and and we can just add that maybe to the recommendation. The other, no, we, the other, the other. Okay, I think no, no, Mr. Mare, Mr. Mare, uh, I think the point here is that you see there is the uh, the special defense account. Uh, it's money that um, uh, AMSCO was utilizing. Um, to finance all the acquisitions, including uh, repairs and maintenance. I was making a point in this report that if there is no allocation made um, to the special defense accounts, then that poses a threat to the, the, the equipment that some of which are now starting to be obsolete. I think the point is being made. Yeah, yes, but just to, remember, yes. just to remember that SDA is with the Department of Defense, and then they, yes, transfer, but then they transfer money to Arms Corps, who is the acquisition. No, they don't. No, 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 they don't. There's no transfer. Okay. Apparently, there's an arrangement that Arms Corps can uh, transact okay. from, okay. The, from the special defense accounts. 
I can there's no the transfer. Yeah, no, because then we've got a major problem. Then we've got a major they, problem. Yeah, no, no, no. That's that's a point. There's no remember, remember by law, by law, we appropriate parliament appropriates money. Yeah. The only the, the, the limit that a department could yeah. um you know uh, 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 you know transfer to any outside body. Yeah. It's up to hundred thousand rand. Anything above hundred thousand rand must be sanctioned by parliament. So so that's the reason why I know that there will be no money that comes out of um you know parliament out of the budget without us approving it. Okay. All right. Okay. What is on the special defense account is what is available, or what would be available to both the defense force and the and and arms code. There will be an arrangement as to how that okay. account is operated between the two of them. That's how they were operating. Okay. Okay. Let's 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 yeah. leave it there. But I think we know that we have got a major problem then. That, yes. Uh, no. No. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Oh, let, let's let's go to a let's go to a. Okay. And uh, I, I don't want uh, my my principals to say that, uh, especially the commander in chief, to say that the um, attempts to engage uh, with him uh, did not bear any success. Let's find a way of formulating that without um, yeah. uh, uh, making that uh, explicit. More, more more diplomatic. <laughs> yeah, we need to be more diplomatic about it. Yeah. Whoever wrote right. that and the, that about the, the deputy minister is very diplomatic. They should just change this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. And then let's, okay. So colleagues, are you, any, any other uh, observation you are making on these observations? I think the observations are brilliant. Are brilliant. Okay. Uh, none, sir. Just a two uh, things. Let me check. Yes, uh, Motisa. Uh, Shelembe. Is your hand up? Chairperson, just, right. just another, another observation, and I'm not quite sure whether it must be in the observations um, or whether we must just have a recommendation with that. The minister, <laughs> the minister has made reference to uh, that the Secretary of Defense has got proposals on how the SNDF can become more self-sustainable. So I, I don't see that in the observations, but I mean, uh, even if we leave it out, you know, it, uh, hopefully we will put it into the recommendations that we have to interact with the SecDef on her proposals on how to make the SNDF okay. self-sustainable. All right. Because that was quite important uh, for me. Yes, no, no, no. It, it was um, uh, on that they are looking at alternative, uh, you know, uh, streams of uh, of revenue. Yeah, and and, and all right. I, I I got the impression that the new broom is, is sweeping. Uh, you know. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. We will make a note on 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 that observation, colleagues. Are we done with the observations uh, on of the sixteenth of October? Uh, Chairperson, I have lowered my hand. I've already yes, lowered my I hand. That, um, yes, let me just check if uh, Modise said was up or has low, been lowered now. All right. Okay, colleagues, we let's go to the next set of observations on the 17th. Let's go finish them. Finish them, right? Let's finish observations on the 16th. Colleagues, um, <coughs> all right. Uh, Any other comments? Come down. Observations of the 16th. Scroll down. Collins, 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 you are back. Collins, uh, can you switch off your mic, please? We'll come back to you. I, we can see that you are back. Yes, sir, we are back. Yeah, just switch off your mic. Can we make sure that we, we want to finish this business first? Just switch off your mic. All right, colleagues, uh, the observations of the uh, 12th, oh, sorry, of the 17th, go back, go down. All right, colleagues, is there anything you want to uh, uh, comment on here? Okay, I'm, I mean, on E, concerns was expressed that the DOT has not seriously engaged with the proposal 
to address its challenges, uh, such as the possible incorporation of military hospitals within the National Department of uh, Health, uh, resuscitating the members' exit uh, mechanism, uh, increased utilization of MSDS, addressing rank inflation, and addressing saponomalies. I don't think the issue of incorporation of the of the hospitals, of the military hospitals within the Department of Health was canvassed thoroughly to make us understand exactly what would this achieve. But we know about the exit mechanism. We know about the MSDS issues. We know about, uh, we've been told, informed about rank inflation, even though they said there is no such. And uh, we also know that there is supernumerals. Those are the statements of facts. But I'm not quite certain about the incorporation of the military hospitals. If we want to include that in the same uh, paragraph, I can just make it a separate point. I yeah, can we can make it a, sep a, sep a separate point, but put it differently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. All right. And then uh, that was my, okay. So I'm done with my observations for my part. Any other thing, colleagues? Any other comments on the observations? Nothing, sir. All right. Let's go to recommendations. Jefferson, the recommendations are fine. I've just got uh, a, a two recommend or two points, and I'm not sure whether you know how we should put those into the recommendations. The one was um, that we that we must interact with the Secretary of Defence or request the Secretary of Defence to uh, you know to brief us on her proposal on on how to uh, how the SNDF can become more self-sustainable. That was the one. And the other one that I've just picked up, um, and, and, and it, I think in the, in the previous minutes, we have also touched on the defense review. Um, and that was the, the comment that the deputy minister made that the defense review is too expensive and would take too long. Thus, an alternative mechanism should be sought on how to address the challenges in the DOD. So if the defense review is too expensive, and we all know that the 2015 defense review is uh, too expensive. So, so either the deputy minister, or the secretary of defence, or anybody, or, or, or someone else, or the minister, uh, must then at one stage come and say, you know, is this a valid observation that was made? If it is, so what are the alternative mechanisms, you know, that we should then look at? And 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 uh, because that that was a that was a comment that was made, and and I just felt that we cannot just leave it there just hanging and, and, and somewhere someone must come and tell us, okay, if this is the case, what is the alternative that we have? To no, we, uh, go, go back to Simare. It addresses that point. We're saying it was agreed that once cabinet has agreed with the force design and the force structure, the department should alert the JSCD in order to arrange for the department to present the approved force design and, the, and force structure uh, okay. to the committee. Yeah, okay. I think uh, the, the, the issue has, is still within, yeah. is still under our radar. It's not escaping okay. us. They are still going to come back to us. Okay. But, but on, on the on on the on on the on the subject uh, coming back yeah. uh, on self sustainable sustainability programs, yeah. I'm yeah. happy we can include that as a, as as, yeah. a, as as a recommendation. Yeah, I would love right? to hear a suggestion. Okay. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you so much. And and on the aid, uh, the committee resolved that an investigation into the armament situation. And I think that's can he, uh, instead of armament situation, a person who reads this uh, without having gone through the observations and and the whole context yeah. may not get um, yeah. a sense of what we are trying to say. Yeah. Can we yeah. just unpack that a little bit, a little more? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and whether we must refer to armament or munitions, uh, you know, what is the right right terminology to use? And what well. is the right terminology? Armaments or um, yeah. ammunition? I don't know what's the right terminology. But I remember yeah. us discussing that that the 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 we we should so that we go back and make a recommendation yeah. um, to 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 the powers that be. Even if even if we we say yeah. uh, if even if we say okay, don't make don't 
in, in the special defense accounts, um, allocate ring fence money for uh, this project, this project, and that project. You know, and yeah. uh, at, at least we would be talking something that they would understand. And I think that was the idea of why we need to launch into launch an investigation so that we are able to come back yeah. with a recommendation that would uh, make them see the need why we must we must con we must fund at least uh, projects rather than just give a blank check. Yeah. All right. Any other thing, colleagues? I don't see the hands. All right. If if if, if there are no hands, sir, then I propose for the for the acceptance. Uh, uh, acceptance is proposed. Uh, any seconder? Chair, I don't know where are the other members, but it seems that we are the only ones who second. But I second them. I hope it will not be a problem right. in the minutes. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, Mata is seconded. Looking uh, for the members. All right, Honorable colleagues. Honorable Mata must not be tired of the committee. You no, are correct. I'm not no, but what I'm saying. I don't want it to be a problem in the minutes. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 you are not. Uh, <laughs> all right, colleagues, we are done with this, with this report. And uh, let's go back to our colleagues. And uh, we have until a half past eight. Um, so now it's six minutes to eight. Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins. Yes, sir. Yes. Can you unmute your mic? Yes, sir. Yes. All I right. did. OK. Uh, OK, what, 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 what we have agreed, uh, because you disappeared, and uh, is that uh, we'll write you and request, um, uh, we'll write to you and request certain information per member. Right, and the 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 first number, the name, in other words, the name, and and the surname, ID number, and the prefix number, and the first number, and the unit uh, to which a member was assigned to. Uh, the 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 nature of the contract, and they had with the the employer the term of the contract and the reasons uh, for termination of the, the of, of of the of exit of exiting uh, from the 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 the, the employ uh, from the employment of the employee so right to you to ask you to supply us with that information now per member there was a question that uh, a one member raised that part of your comments you said some members were providing uh, assistance such as protecting uh, certain personnel, and, uh, but he was puzzled, and uh, so is I, that that's not a responsibility of a, of a soldier to provide a VIP uh, protection. Why you, you, had, um, you, you, you mentioned that? And then the last point, uh, is is that members who exited were given a certificate, all right? And uh, the certificate will give you uh, all the information, including the the contract period, and 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 the and the reason for exiting the institution, right? And uh, so would want all of that information in a table form per member. How many members do we have? Mr. Collins is gone, Chair. He's not here. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, we are done. But colleagues, so we'll do that. Uh, I'll talk to him on the side. All right, colleagues, we, we are done. There was another report that I wanted us to, to take us through and to 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 yeah to to take I mean want the team to take us through. Can you take us through the report of Sadi? Is the last report? The, the, 
our meeting with NDIC and, uh, uh, and the defense industry. Minutes, uh, sorry, report. All right, uh, so this is just brief us about the structure of the report um, uh, who's taking us through. Um, Peter? Yeah, uh, yes, Chair, uh, this is a draft consolidated report of the committee. Um, all the engagement with the defense-related uh, industry role players. And the first part is just the, the aim of the report and the process and then contextual orientations. And after that, just the various role players. The first one more in the regulatory capacity, the NCACC. After that, ENDIC, and then Armscore, Donnell, and then AMD. And it's concluded by the observations uh, and recommendations and just a short note on the way ahead. Peter, please. Uh, there, Chair, um, basically just saying that the committee, since the start of, of, of the sixth parliament, we've engaged with all those related, uh, role players that I've just uh, 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 mentioned. And just in the last sentence there, we're just saying that this report is essential from a committee's perspective to assess the industry based on its historic and potential contribution to the country's economy security and potential benefits that can be derived if the sector is fully functional. And then there just the, the aim is to consolidate the various inputs um, and then check what are the prospects and the challenges facing the defense strategy as uh, presented to the committee. And then basically that it just uh, concludes with the observations and recommendations. Um, and that is just to assist us with planning our way ahead. Um, the process Jay, that was followed is just a saying there uh, that since the inception of the sixth parliament, page up please, um, there are the various uh, meetings that we had um, with the now ending, uh, the GCAC, there's the Directorate Conventional Arms Control of the NCACC, uh, our meetings uh, with the NCACC and the quarterly, and sometimes also the, the annual report, um, the now and arms score, and the last meeting on the fifth. Uh, of, of November, really recently, it was ENDIC and AMD. Uh, Jay, uh, I think it's important that we just uh, refer to the contextual orientation with regards to this report. Um, and it's just saying that, that one of the biggest challenges facing the industry is the declining defense budget and the subsequent negative impact on the industry. The budget shortfall means that the SENF cannot modernize the acquisition of equipment and the systems while the maintenance, repair, and overall MRO is falling behind. And the fact that the SDA that we just referred to now uh, all is designed, you know, for the SENF's weapons acquisition and long-term research and development project is being phased out is one of the main reasons for this situation. And then we're just saying there how the defense the review actually expressed itself on it, um, saying that we need to arrest the decline with regards to the critical uh, capabilities. Um, and saying that if we look at all these things and saying they uh, and noting what the 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 the, the shake dev has said, face down, please. She was saying that without urgent proper support, the industry would implode and even lose the MRO capabilities. It basically underscores the perilous situation facing our country. Chair, um, there we can just note the NCACC how it's being es established. Paragraph two point one is just the responsibility of the NCACC uh, to Parliament. Pizza, please. Um, and there, Chair, we just started with some of the uh, 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 challenges that were highlighted. I think we're all aware that there's a problem with the system. Um, some people, it, uh, it's basically a many manual IT system. And uh, we can also recall that Arms Corps, um, the CEO actually offered, you know, to assist with the open uh, a, a source, a, a system to assist them. So that's the first problem with regards to the NCACC, the system that they have. Page down, please. Um, there, Chair, I think this is an issue that you yourself also raised is the statistics. You know, firstly, it doesn't talk about the economic impact of it. It's also not comparative, um, you know, with the, the various quarters and the various years. And then also, it's also not comparative with regards to the other role players or other countries that we are trading with. The end user certificate, as we all know, has been a major uh, bone of contention, but now we believe in it has been addressed. Um, the amendment to the ECU um, was gazetted 
and the NCAC believe that the, the issue is now being uh, uh, resolved. Um, the next one is just about the regularity and predictability of the NCACC meeting, um, where the industry was saying, you know, especially during election cycles, you know, um, that they have challenges, you know, with having the applications approved. Um, but uh, the NCACC told us there that they've now addressed it. But they've also then said in the beginning of the year, or since the start of COVID, you know, uh, they had problems. Um, with uh, getting the, the applications timely approved um, and because they were not sitting uh, regularly. Um, meanwhile, the, the industry was open uh, for business and the committee said that they will later on follow up on the specific uh, issue. The next challenge here is just about the directorate's uh, capacity uh, where the industry believe that they are actually under capacitated um, and they are struggling to complete doc with documents and, and the submission thereof. Okay, the next section just dealt with what the SECDEF uh, as the chair of NDIC uh, presented, um, referring there, you know, how it has been established, you know, based on the recommendation there in uh, chapter 15 of the defense review. The next one, 3.1, um, is just the nine uh, initiatives of, of, of NDIC. Uh, the first one was to draft the industry strategy. The second one was to uh, establish the defense industry fund and to draft the sector a charter. And there was also a task team under NEL, um, the intervention plan, uh, designation of small caliber weapons and ammunition, a resource based alternative funding model, the export support, uh, like the uh, with regards to the end user certificate and then participation in the industry, in government and diplomatic engagement. Uh, the next one is just giving uh, more detail about the defense uh, sector code, um, the fund itself, um, and something that we'll come back later to as well is the basically the task team under NEL that uh, NDIC has established. Um, then just uh, more information about the small arms, uh, caliber weapons, um, and then, then a reference to the black uh, owned suppliers and military veterans. And these are some of the challenges that was noted uh, by NDIC. And the first one is just saying that the situation at the NEL uh, is making it difficult for many of the SMEs in the sector, defense sector to survive because they form part of the NEL supply chain. The second one is this, the decrease in the budget of the DOD has resulted in the decline of the demand that does making it difficult for defense uh, companies to survive. Um, the issue of the EUC that has now been resolved. Um, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pan pandemic has slowed down efforts to get a designation of small caliber weapons and ammunition to be presented to the cluster, the JTPS cluster. Um, and then the defense sector chart is not really fully operationalized but uh, steel committee uh, is serving as the interim uh, charter council and was putting mechanisms in place to ensure compliance with the code. And this included the establishment of this fund to support the SMMEs. And the last one is just the, the enabling of non-contentious marketing, contracting and ex export permits to be approved by one member of the NCACC. Uh, that was a recommendation from NDIC. So, uh, point four is just uh, arms score itself uh, the, the legislation that has uh, established it. Uh, and then we make specific reference to the arms score because arms score itself is not only a, a, a sovereign and a strategic uh, a, a, a defense capability, it is also assisting with the repair and maintenance uh, of, 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 of vessels uh, that is uh, in need of maintenance and so on. Page down, please. Uh, so there is just uh, some of the challenges uh, are noted. Um, the main challenge, again, relates to the, the, the economic situation um, at the NEL. The next one was in relation to the intellectual property, the IP rights. Um, there has been a challenge over the years. And AMSCO then indicated that there's, it has now a policy you know, framework that's actually fair and favorable to all those who want to develop IP, especially those who want to invest. It was also indicated the IP belongs to the DOD and is managed by AMSCO and I should add by the NEL. And then also the CEO of AMSCO indicated that they've developed an open source system, something that I referred to earlier, 
uh, they can actually assist with the digitization of the NCAC's permit. And he said that he will then uh, speak to the SECDEF around this. Um, Council also emphasized that many of the engineers that left are willing to come back, but it means the NDC needs to sort out its problem as this is in the interest of the country and our future. Chair, the next one just deal with the NEL and, 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 and the challenges that, uh, that they, they've been having. There is the team um, if that NDIC has established and it basically saying that the enormous impact that the potential demise of the NEL has or might have on the DOD and the rest of the industry is important to restate the development of NDIC task team on the NEL. NDIC created task team to diagnose the challenges within the organization and to make recommendations. And the task team has found that the root causes of the NEL's liquidity crisis included a collapsing governance, corruption, and inappropriate investment decision. And the task team has made several recommendations, including the recapitalization and reset of the DOD contracts. <coughs> so this is just um, what the acting COE then contributed, Talib Sadiq. Um, and he's saying there that they've been struggling with liquidity challenges since uh, uh, 20, May 2020, and they also had problems with paying the, the, the salaries. Um, secondly, they've developed a strategy uh, which is to decentralize the organization where each division stands on its own in order to be client-centric. And the third one, and they were looking at structural reforms to be introduced to conclude strategic partnerships in order to get sustainable market access as to, so as to reduce the dependency on the local industry and to bring much needed capital into the business to cleanse the balance sheets. Um, then the inability to, to pay the salaries is basically meant that they've lost uh, very skilled persons, uh, and some of these were losses in some critical defense sovereign capabilities, in particular in the missile division, and something that we've all been really concerned about. And then from a stakeholder perspective, the banks were reluctant to support them due to the negative preconceptions about the industry. And then the second last point is the company dependency on a single client, and that is the DOD, was one of the main challenges. And the NEL is of the view that it would be good to study the trends in partner countries, such as the Middle East, to see how they have developed localized capabilities. And then say, there is just the challenges that we are all aware of that the NEL is facing, the knock-on effect on the SMMEs, the second one, the turnover of especially um, the, the engineers. And then I think something that we're all very concerned about, that the NEL is the major older of South Africa's sovereign and strategic uh, capabilities. And they say that they require an injection of around 683 million, you know, for the current financial year, just to, to protect and safeguard our sovereign and strategic uh, capabilities. And then uh, the presentation by Mr. Ndlovo of AMD, um, just saying, you know, that they have around 72 members and it's a voluntary uh, uh, association. So it means members can come uh, and, and, and go. And then uh, 6.1, he just referred to the state of the defense uh, industry, uh, its impact on, on, on national security. And I think this may be important. Um, he says there that as an integral part of the SAMD capabilities, government has control over key capabilities, even though they may be in private hands, they are not outside government control. Sari also indicated that it was a useful tool for foreign policy to supporting and allowing South African forces to assist forces of friendly countries and to assist UN deployments. In addition, the industry also support other government departments, agencies, and other sectors in the economy, such as the intelligence services, the police, home affairs, and fisheries. And so we're all aware of the tremendous impact that Saudi actually has uh, on our, 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 our economy. And saying that, you know, people that have been trained, you know, in, in defense related industry, they can easily find, you know, uh, employment in, in, in other uh, sectors because of the skills that they've acquired. Um, so there, the next one is just uh, the export uh, indicating, you know, the value uh, uh, of the exports in the last sentence. We just make one specific example and saying there that the industry, for instance, stand the risk of losing opportunities in the Middle East to the value of approximately 34 billion rand. So it just indicates that it's quite a lot of money 
uh, that's going around in the defense industry. And if we're not trading properly and timelessly with, with, with other partners, then we might lose uh, those, those, those income. And so there's just the challenges uh, they've, 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 they've listed. Um, and, so, and they also make suggestions in this regard. And they're saying they, what they do require is a direct, deliberate focus and the highest political support was necessary. A government-wide approach to support the Saudi, a stable and predictable local defense spending, including on research and development, a stable and sustainable denial, an effective arms control uh, regime to, to facilitate arms exports, and then financing and related integrants need to get an, a, attention. Uh, carry on. Chair, uh, this was the main bone of contention um, about the, the, the location of the industry itself, because it says that, you know, it's not actually a true location um, in, the, in the Ministry of Defense, given that about 99% of the companies, you know, in the, the defense industry are private entities, and one would have thought uh, some of them, uh, you know, should also be promoted by DTI or small businesses and, 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 and so forth. So they're saying that given this challenge, they are proposing that a proper coordinating structure should be introduced, you know, to just uh, uh, coordinate the location and the efforts of, of the players in the defense industry. And their chair is just some of the uh, assistance that they required uh, from or sought uh, from the committee. Um, and the first one is that the international defense integrations are highly political. Thus, there is a need for it to be driven by political leaders. And I think you made the example of the French president, you know, uh, when it comes to Africa, you know, he also tries to get contracts for their defense industry. And then also, secondly, there is the brand reputation management with the crisis in the Middle East region and a number of African countries. Uh, engagement with the presently on these uh, implications in the image of the country and then instruments to be used by the state to support the defense industry export. And then something that we've uh, also talked about is the approval process uh, by NCACC should be fast-tracked and it should be benchmarked with other countries to ensure competitiveness. And then interim measures should be put in place to allow for the industry to operate during emergency periods and election uh, uh, cycle. And then the permit application uh, should be digitized something that referred to, to earlier. Carry on. So here we come to the observations and recommendations. And I think the, the first one uh, that is, is was very concerning is the loss of care skills. Um, because, for instance, around 80 engineers will be lost, and then they're going to utilize the IP somewhere else, and, and, and it may life uh, come to, to be to our detriment. Uh, the predictability of the, the NCACC meetings, the manual system of the directorate, um, the difference of opinion. I think this is the point that was actually noted by uh, Atul Kumbara of, of Arms for where, where, where we, he was saying that on the one end, while the NCACC specifically, Atul Kajele was saying that, that, that everything is, is, is honky dory uh, in, in, in the functioning of, of or the processing of applications, the defense industry, one could have noted throughout that they were frustrated at the delays uh, that they are experiencing uh, uh, with regards to approval of applications. And then the next one there is just the intellectual uh, property rights. And uh, uh, the community noted the, um, the opinion that the IP rights could be exploited to raise revenue and wanted more clarity on, on the issue. Uh, consequent management, um, this was strongly emphasized uh, by AMD in saying, you know, that all the various role players should actually play their role and if they don't, you know, there should be a consequent management. And then the assistance uh, of the, 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 the committee, um, the saying that the committee noted suggestions on how it can assist, especially regarding involvement of political leaders to support and promote the industry abroad. Um, and then the underlying impact of the NEL, I think that's an issue that runs throughout here. And lastly, related to the recommendations are just, to the observations are just the recommendations and the first one is with regard to loss of a scale scale, where we recommend that the whole government approach should be adopted to assist and support the defense industry in order to prevent the loss of scale skills to other countries and to attract new scale skills to the industry. With regard to the predictability of the meetings of the NCACC, it says, although the DCAC indicated it has now been addressed 
the committee recommends that the NCICG should be alert to this concern and how it impacts on the defense history. The NCA should, should from 2020 indicate in its quarterly reports to Parliament the dates and the number of meetings held to consider export and import permits, or basically all the applications. The manual systems, given the assurance by the DAs, ACC that they are planning to migrate to a new system early 2020 and that Arms Corps uh, will assist them with digitizing the system. Um, we just recommended there that the committee should, the party should collaborate and ensure speedy and a seamless migration to a more efficient and user-friendly system. With regards to the difference of opinion, uh, the committee undertook to take this issue further at the next NCACC meeting with the ministers to raise and hopefully clarify the frustrations and to explore possible solutions in order to ensure a collaborative, coordinated and supportive approach from all role players. With regards to the IP rights, the committee welcomed the view that IP rights can now be exploited for additional revenue and that Arms Corps and now are managing most of the rights on behalf of DOD and recommended that the defense industry should enhance its efforts in this regard. With regards to consequent management, the committee undertook to further investigate the occasional non-responsive and lack of cooperation according to AMD with the NCAC and the ministry, given the dire need for predictability, predictability and the regularity of the industry. Chair, just the last one with regards to the assistance, uh, the committee also uh, undertook to engage the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises as well as the Portfolio Committee on International Relations in order to highlight the need for a whole government approach to support the industry. And then just lastly, Chair, um, on the way forward, the committee undertook to discuss this report early in 2021 and to draft a program of engagement with the relevant defense industry role players and the portfolio committees at parliament, as well as the selected political leaders in order to facilitate the kind of support and assistance that such a crucial contributor to our national economy and defense capability deserves. Thank you, Chair. That is uh, the report. Muted, Chair. No, thank you very much. I'm sorry, Mr. Ryder. Uh, can we go up and pick it up from the uh, uh, discussions? All right. Way forward. Okay, let's look at the way forward. Let's go forward. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, no, go down, go down. Right, way forward, please. Uh, 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 okay, this way forward. And um, <clears throat> all right, uh, this is what uh, sat the table. And um, it spoke respect to police intervention. Sadi uh, suggested uh, uh, those uh, matters. Uh, okay. Go down. All right. And then this is a, a committee observations and recommendations. Colleagues? Uh, let's start with um, a 7.1 and those bullets um, uh, underneath. Anything you want to uh, raise as a, a comment? All right, go down. Go down after, con yeah, right, right, right. And then... Uh, Go down, right, and uh, uh, wait a minute. Well, let's let's go to recommendations. Are we done with all the recommendations? Okay, 
Yeah, so these are the recommendations, right, up to underlying uh, impact of the net. And then, uh, wait a minute. No, we've done with 7.2. Just go up. All right. These are the Stay with the observations and recommendations. Right, these are the observations, right? And uh, are there any questions on the on the resolution and the observations or comments, Mr. Ryder? There was, there was one observation, uh, if I may, just come on at this stage, uh, relating to the end user certificates, and I think that um, it was Mr. Mutley, I believe, who raised it at the time. But the fact that there's a little bit of discomfort around end user certificates and, and how enforceable <coughs> they are and how much control there is. And I believe we agreed that we were going to have a little bit more engagement of, on, on, on that going forward. Um, I don't see that in the observation or the recommendation, Chair. Uh, <coughs> I thought, uh, Mr. Wright, that the, the issue of the end user certificate uh, has been uh, settled, but Mutla is online. I uh, would uh, comment on this. Um, remember, in the past, there was insistence on post uh, inspection delivery, and uh, but that has been changed to a, a, a clause that would be in a bilateral uh, agreement between. Uh, countries, uh, how that would be uh, oversighted. Uh, I think it was left at that. That was that was gazetted. Um, uh, uh, do you still want to take that one any further? That's that would be. Uh, I, I think you've covered it. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. That, that's thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajah. Uh, let's go down. Let's go to. All right. That completes. Can I say what that? This, the, now, these are the recommendations, all right? Loss of skills, uh, predictability of NCACC meetings, all right? Uh, go down. Manual IT systems of the DACC, uh, difference of opinion and the intellectual property right, consequence management, assistance of the JSCT. Colleagues, any uh, comment on this? Uh, Chairperson, I think from my side, I think it was it was well captured, uh, and especially if I look at the way forward, that we will discuss this anyway uh, further. So obviously there might be things flowing from this. Um, I know the one point that we have raised during the discussion is um, the fact that we still experience that some of our exported munitions end, ends up on both sides uh, in Libya, in Syria, in Yemen. So, um, and, and I know that's something that we have said that we must discuss further, but because the way forward basically provides for that, I don't think we have to, we have to include this uh, in any way now. Because we yeah. Again, no, no, I agree, but it was not part of the discussions at this meeting. No, it was. I mean, I specifically raised it. I specifically raised it where I asked, you know, what the defense industry will be doing from their side. We know that the end user certificate existed, uh, but we also know that the, you know, that the munition exported um, uh, ends up on both sides. And, and what is, what are they basically doing to prevent, you know, that from happening? Um, and I think that is just something that we must take cognizance because there will be constant pressure if we do not, you know, at least apply our minds with regard to that because we want to see the industry grow and develop, uh, but we also don't want to be put in a position that, that you know, parliament and government must take a decision that is not good. And, and there's some form of responsibility on the industry, uh, you know, to, to try to prevent things like that happening as well. Okay. No, that's no, fine. Uh, I note that. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mare. On the way forward. Happy with that. Thank you. Happy with it too. All right. Any move on uh, for the acceptance? I'm happy to move, Chair. Uh, Mr. Mare moves. Any second? Eh? 
I, I second. Uh, Mr. Chabilin, uh, uh, No, Felix, sorry, Chair. I thought it was uh, Audrey had to second again. Isn't that not the pattern we followed? Oh, sure. Again? <laughs> what pattern? Audrey had to second again. Isn't that the pattern we've established? No, no. <laughs> no, anyone can second. All right. Thanks. Um, uh, thank you very much. And um, you, what, what, what was the question that uh, the chair, the court chair can second? Is that what you're saying? No, no, not at all, Chair. No, not at all. Not at all. I was saying okay. we established a pattern earlier on. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. That's a lighter that's note, Chair. It was really a lighter note. Yeah. Okay. No, no, thanks. Yeah. I, know. I, I, I failed last time. Colleagues, thank you very much for your time. I think we have covered uh, a huge ground. I thought we should uh, complete these reports because this this is the last yeah. meeting of yeah. the formal meeting of, of, of the standing committee. And it's not right to have minutes and, uh, and, 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 and reports that um, remain outstanding. Uh, right into into the new year and and only to be adopted uh, in the new year. Yeah. I thought we should close the year with and, and complete uh, what was transacted in this new year. Colleagues, thank you very much for your time. I know we'll meet. I know we'll meet again on on a trip. Uh, I, to... I, just, I just wanted to compliment you because you and and the coach here because I think Will Alam and and the staff and and Peter will 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 tell you that uh, the, the Joint Standing Committee of Defences never meet so often uh, like we have met this year and it's actually very very good and that's why i think we have made progress well beyond what we have done in the past so so thank you to you guys um it, it's really it's really important and uh, i think we appreciate that thank you very much yeah. thank you guys no 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 uh, i i really appreciate that all uh, uh, is uh, is a credit to to the team that um, uh, i'm working with uh, all comrades uh, colleagues uh, putting their effort to uh, number one ensure they attend the meetings and they, when they're in the meetings they contribute and they 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 provide direction. I, I think we have made tremendous efforts as a quality and of course by the team that you just mentioned. Um, we really uh, commend and uh, extend our appreciation. Uh, to their support. Colleagues, thank you very much. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Well, have a lively evening, Chair, and the rest of the members. Thank you, so thank you very much. much. Thank you. From the Minister of Science, uh, hmm? uh, after the summons, uh, court, or like today, tomorrow, Baranyaka court, and then not to summon the man, I think. Eh? Summon the man, to my or someone agree as a man, I'm 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 a
ሚሊተሪ በተነ በተ ማራገል ነው ነው ኩሩብ ሚሊተሪ በተነ በተ ባይሳብ ሎሞፎ ከልቋ ኦኬ አካትሪ ኦትሎክ ኦፊሶ ትሪ ኦትሎክ ኦቶ 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 ኦ